The Miami Heat won their first NBA championship in 2006. Miami's formula seems pretty straightforward. Longtime Heat leader Pat Riley drafted superstar Dwayne Wade, then traded for superstar Shaquille O'Neal, then coached them to a title. Simple. But that short version of the story leaves out one season, one important character, and the start of one long-lasting beef. When Shaq arrived in Miami, his coach wasn't Pat Riley. It was Stan Van Gundy. The relationship between these two ended in a swift divorce, but it stayed testy for a while longer. Let's begin with Stan, because he was there first. In 1995, legendary head coach Pat Riley abruptly ditched the New York Knicks for the Miami Heat. Miami gave him everything he wanted, a huge salary plus control over the bench and front office. Riley did not, however, get to keep one of his favorite sidekicks. The Knicks refused to let longtime assistant Jeff Van Gundy follow Riley to Miami. Undeterred, Riley found himself another Van Gundy, literally. Jeff's older, hairier brother, Stan, had been climbing up the college coaching ranks for years and finally got a big head coach gig at Wisconsin the season prior. Well, guess what, kid? You're an NBA assistant coach now. For the rest of the 90s, Riley tried, came close, and ultimately failed to contend for a championship with Stan by his side all the while. Around the millennium, the heat began to collapse, and in 2003, they posted their worst record of Riley's tenure. Bad enough to land a top five pick in the 03 draft, which, hey, not a bad year to be in the lottery. With the fifth pick, Riley snagged Marquette guard Dwayne Wade, Miami's hopeful star of a new era. But, Mere days before the 0304 season began, Riley decided he didn't want to coach this rebuild project and suddenly resigned that half of his dual role. Riley supposedly walked into Stan's office, said, you ready? And then gave the other Van Gundy brother his first ever NBA head coaching job on the spot. And it went great. This team was fun as hell. Not just the sensational rookie Wade, but developing stars like Karan Butler and Lamar Odom, wonderful vets like Eddie Jones and Brian Grant, pure aesthetic joy in the form of Rafer Alston, and yes, Udonis Haslam was once a rookie. The Heat were cool and likable, and for the first time in a bit, pretty good. They made the playoffs as a four seed and won a nail-biter first round against the Hornets. For piloting this youth movement and defying expectations, Van Gundy received strong consideration for Coach of the Year. Awesome. Great feelings all around. And then, quite suddenly, those expectations exploded in the summer of 04. Riley, who was still team president, went ahead and traded like half the people I just named for yes. Van Gundy's happy-go-lucky young roster got sold out for the NBA's biggest superstar in terms of personality, fame, salary, and, you know, size. No one was larger than Shaq. Don't get me wrong, managing Shaquille O'Neal is a fantastic problem to have, but his sudden presence would represent a monumental shift for anyone, let alone a coach entering his second season. Shaq was believed to respect fame and resume above all else. Everyone thought he played a role in Phil Jackson taking the Lakers job from the less accomplished Del Harris just a few years prior. So off the bat, people wondered if O'Neal might tune out the inexperienced Van Gundy and might respond better to Riley, who had won titles with the Lakers during Shaq's childhood. People even wondered if Riley would swoop back onto the bench and reclaim his old second job. All this despite Shaq once writing he would never play for Riley because of his famously grueling practices. 
In the meantime, Shaq met his new actual coach with typical good humor, if maybe not the best fitness. He found Van Gundy to be a strong disciplinarian and a demanding tactician. Shaq sometimes got a bit frustrated blending into a new system, but as far as I can tell, this was a fine enough professional partnership. The major challenge for both men was Shaq's health. O'Neal managed to stay available for most of his first heat season, but played through a sore hamstring early on and dragged a troublesome bruised thigh into the playoffs. Still, he was a force when he played, and not even Miami's foremost threat alongside the rapidly improving Wade. Van Gundy coached both his stars in the All-Star game, topped the Eastern Conference with 59 wins, then guided Miami through playoff sweeps of the Nets and Wizards, even with Shaq severely hobbled. In an Eastern Conference final against the defending champion Detroit Pistons, Miami overcame a shaky Game 1 to pull ahead three games to two. Stan Van Gundy had the Heat one win away from the NBA Finals, closer than Riley ever got them as coach. Wade had to sit Game 6 with a rib injury, which cost the Heat dearly, but he returned for Game 7 at home. That decisive contest looked good for Miami. Even with their nagging injuries, Wade and Shaq led the Heat back from a halftime deficit. Shaq played the final eight and a half minutes of the fourth quarter and influenced the action in waves, almost always featured in Miami's offense as a screener or a finisher. Each time the heat seemed to slip, Shaq demanded the ball and restored order, like this stretch around the three minute mark. A post up, a drawn foul, and believe it or not, two clutch free throws. Then, after Doug Collins noticed the big guy calling his own number, Shaq said, bring me the basketball right now. This gorgeous shake and bucket against Ben Wallace to pull back ahead. Still, you could tell Shaq wasn't quite himself on a play like this lob from Wade, and, you know, he wasn't going to be perfect from the free throw line. All this sets the scene for the final 90 seconds of Game 7. Miami trailed once more. This part is important for our beefy purposes. Possession number one. Shaq is out of the picture, on the weak side of the floor. Wade takes a quick shot and bricks it badly. Possession number two comes out of a timeout, so Coach Van Gundy had a chance to draw something up down three points. Whatever it was, it does not find Shaq. Wade faces a double team and just dribbles straight into a tie-up. Shaq gave the Heat life with a steal on the next play, and Shaq scored Miami's only field goal of the final two minutes, but it was too little, too late. Blown fourth quarter lead, blown series lead, no trip to the finals for the East's number one seed. And here it began. After the game, reporters asked O'Neal why he didn't dominate down the stretch, and Big Diesel shifted that onus onto Van Gundy. I don't make the decisions, ask the guy who makes the decisions. Almost immediately thereafter, rumors bubbled. Ripples of those ideas from the prior summer. Maybe Shaq would rather Riley coach the Heat. In August, ESPN's Rick Buecher reported Riley might indeed make that move, and noted that Shaq didn't have Van Gundy's back in public. Nonetheless, Miami opened the 05-06 season with the same coach. O'Neal missed a bunch of that early season with injury, but took the opportunity to dismiss that ESPN report. The day Rick Buecher reported credibly would be the day Shaq became the 48th white president of the United States. Which is interesting and worth considering because in December of 2005, Stan Van Gundy quit. He said he wanted to focus on his family. Everyone else said Shaq and or Pat forced him out. And, well, Riley did instantly give himself Van Gundy's job, and then coached Miami to the aforementioned 06 title. After the Heat won it all without him, people felt bad for Van Gundy, but, you know, it's hard to argue with a ring, and Stan soon resurfaced in a prime role just a couple hundred miles away. Head coach of the Orlando Magic, noted employers of Dwight Howard, who many saw as the next Shaq, and who Shaq saw as an obnoxious poser. There was plenty of beef between these two, 
and it was a Shaq Howard collision that inflamed the Shaq Van Gundy beef. In March of 2009, Shaq, now with the Phoenix Suns, hit the floor while defending a Dwight Howard post-up dunk. Look closely at the timing and the angle, and I think you can pretty fairly say that Shaq exaggerated contact to try to draw a foul. It happens, but it's the kind of behavior for which Shaq himself might disparage an opponent. Because of that, Van Gundy razzed Shaq about it during the game and kept going afterward. He was shocked to see his old player take a fall. He said Shaq should stand up and play like a man, and he even used the unspeakable F word. You better believe Shaq responded. Good lord did he respond. First, he defended himself against that loathsome F word and offered a weird little lecture on semantics. Then, Shaq pointed a cannon at Van Gundy, repeatedly belittling his former coach's entire career. One thing I really despise is a front runner. So, you know, I know for a fact that he's a master of panic. And, uh, you know, when it gets time for, you know, his team to go in the postseason and do certain things, uh, he will let him down because of his panic. And uh, I've been there before I played for him, so. That wasn't even all of it. Shaq called Van Gundy a nobody and said he wasn't going to let nobodies take shots at him. Oh, and one more thing. Make sure you print this. Everybody who plays for Van Gundy dislikes him. This is what's known among students of beef as a spicy meatball. Mamma mia. Van Gundy wasn't going to volley it back, though. He laughed, he called Shaq sensitive, and basically left it at that. Dwight wanted no part of this, but other Magic players stepped up to be like, uh, yeah, hey, you know, we like our coach just fine, uh, sometimes. Shaq didn't find any of this funny. And for a little while, they went their separate ways. Shaq's career wound down, and when reminded of the blow-up, he said he was just defending himself, that it wasn't his style to call people out. I disagree, but okay. Van Gundy, meanwhile, coached the Magic to the 09 Finals, but things soured thereafter. Stan's reputation took a hit, in large part because he and Dwight had a falling out that ended, quite awkwardly, with Stan telling reporters that Dwight wanted him fired, followed by Stan indeed getting fired soon thereafter. History was repeating itself, or was it? A year prior, Shaq had released a book, and therein insisted he had nothing to do with Van Gundy's exit from Miami in 2005, that that had more to do with a rift between Van Gundy and Pat Riley. There's definitely something to that, but I will note that Shaq also mentioned Van Gundy's distaste for his, uh, behavior, and claimed that Miami would not have won the 06 title if Van Gundy remained their coach. And now, post-book publication, Shaq weighed in on the Stan Dwight breakup of 2012. Even though Shaq very publicly despised Dwight Howard, he took Dwight's side. First of all, private conversations should never be brought public. I think it was a Bush League move by Stan Van Gundy, really, personally. First of all, he's lost his team forever now. That right there can never be repaired. Players respect guys with proven resumes. You know, Stan's been there a, a, a while. He's a good coach, but as you know, in this league, good is not good enough. It's all about winning championships. And I think at some time, they don't respect his decision-making. That stuff sounds a lot like the reasons people believed that Shaq preferred Pat Riley to Van Gundy back in 2005. When he talks like that, it becomes difficult to believe that Shaq had nothing to do with Van Gundy's sudden heat departure back then. Perhaps he was just a smoother operator than young Dwight. That would certainly fit with the low level of provocation it took for Shaq to verbally dismember his former coach just a couple years later. Shaq's got plenty of beeves but he tends to cook them up on his own terms and to have fun with them. This one kind of put him on the defensive, and it took a way harsher tone than we're used to. In any event, things turned out okay enough. Van Gundy kept getting jobs and kept having unpleasant exits. In between and since, you'll sometimes see him on TV working alongside Shaq with minimal awkward acknowledgement of their time together. And, and I'm also going to need some stories about D-Wade and Shaq. <laughs> Go no do it, Coach. Adam. 
So this was a brief beef, and mostly an under the surface beef. But don't forget that it included some unusually nasty words, and at its outset, it may have helped shape NBA history. Thank you so much for watching Beef History. Here's that Shaq Dwight beef I mentioned, and in fact Shaq has even more beef than just that. Enjoy! Enjoy!